Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design by looking at program flow instructions. In this video, we're going to look at negative based jumps, meaning that we will look at the end flag within the status register to determine whether we jump or not. The MSP430 provides one negative based jump called jump if negative or JN. Uh, now, what's interesting about this instruction is that there's no jump if not negative. Okay, so you only have one instruction. And it turns out that in this example, we'll see that you actually don't need the other one. You can, since everything is jump if n is equal to one or jump if n is equal to zero, you can just create the logic to do whatever, uh, you, but you have to actually think about it a little bit more as opposed to like jump if carry and jump not if carry, because that has two instructions. We only got one in this example <clears throat> or in this instruction. Okay, so here we go. Let's do a, an example. Uh, and just like before, what we want to do <clears throat> is basically put in a little test program and watch the end flag as instructions are executed. And then what we'll do is jump based on that. Okay, so fire up CCS. And here we go. I'm going to do file, new, oh, file, 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 new, CCS project. <clears throat> and then we'll check to make sure our MCU is right. And then we'll, we'll call this ASM uh, flow and then neg. Let's see here. What do we want to call this? Uh, negative jumps. There we'll go. Negative jumps. <clears throat> okay. All right. We got our empty assembly only. And here we go. All right, here's our main program, and let's come down here. And first thing we're going to do is let's just set up a knit an address label and move something into uh, R4. So let's put zero into R4, and then what we'll do is we'll create two little code snips down here uh, that we'll jump to based on the end flag, and we'll alter R4 accordingly. Okay, so now let's come over here. <clears throat> Let's go main, <clears throat> move up B, and here's our test condition. Let's put negative one into R5, and then let's do this, test it, okay? And remember what a test does. It basically subtracts the, it subtracts zero from the des or the source destination or the operand. So I'm gonna take negative one minus zero, and all it does is update the flags. Okay, so it updates the status flags and status register, and then I can jump based upon that. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go jump negative <clears throat> to a label called it is negative. Okay, and so we're gonna come over here, and down here we're gonna do it is negative. And down here will be our segment to, or our little code to let's put something else into R4. So we'll put one into R4, <clears throat> and then we'll jump back to main, okay? And then what we'll do is we'll have this one, is, or it is positive. <clears throat> and in this one, we'll do move.b, and we'll put two into R4 this time, okay? And then just like always, we jump back to main. Okay, so here it is. Now, here's what's interesting about this. I'm sitting here with this logic, and if it is negative, if this instruction right here is negative, it is going to jump to it is negative, okay? But we can actually create the, uh, the logic for it being positive by simply knowing that if this, if this jump doesn't take, okay, it will simply go to the next instruction in memory, and at this moment in time, we know for a fact that it is positive because this instruction said it is not negative. So all we can do there is say, I'm just gonna jump always to it is positive. <clears throat> and you can use this logic when it, with any of these. So it's basically whenever you have something that's, it's either a one or a zero, you test it for whether the flag is set. And if it doesn't take the jump, then you know right here that it's the opposite and you can jump accordingly. So that's, that's the logic that you can use to get around this whole uh, notion that there is no jump if not negative, okay? All right, so here, here we go. And I'm gonna fire up a session here and we'll watch this. All righty, downloading, it is 
waking up for the day. <laughs> and there it goes. Uh, let's just, just because we like to do this, let's go down to our program memory and take a look. So we've got uh, eight, zero X eight thousand. There's our program memory. And we see our stuff in there. We see our address labels. 8,014 is where it is negative is. 8,018 is where it is positive is. And up here we wanna do, uh, I wanna see the end flag. And I also wanna see our four and our five. And we'll put our five in, uh, put that, that's in decimal. So it's already in decimal, okay. So let's come down here and I'm gonna run, or excuse me, I'm gonna break, set a break point right there. And then I'm gonna run to it. And so now we're down here and we're ready to step. So I'm gonna put this size R4 to zero. <clears throat> All right, now we're gonna move something into uh, R5. <clears throat> and it turns out that this the debugger doesn't show the negative values, it just shows the true code. And so it doesn't have the negative sign in there, but that's okay. Uh, and now what's important is I'm gonna test it, okay? Now that is a negative number by two's complement uh, rules, okay? Because the most significant bit is a one. So if I look at it in binary, the one, 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 that is the two's complement code for negative one decimal. And this most significant bit is the sign bit. And notice that it is a one. That means that this value is considered negative. So now when I step this, I test whether it's negative and look what happened. The negative flag was asserted. Okay. So I know that this number is a negative if I'm treating it as two's complement. So now I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna say, if I wanna jump if it's negative, jump if negative, and it will absolutely jump if negative. So I was able to jump over this instruction right here, and then I was able to put a different value into R4, and there we have it. And so then I can just do this over and over and over. And here's what's interesting. This, this program right here, I don't have the ability to test the, I don't have the ability to come right here and test this instruction. But look at what I can do. What if I came along and I did that? I can actually go in to R5 and I can change its value. So watch what I'm gonna do here. We've never done this before, but I'm gonna put this back into decimal. And I'm gonna come right here and I'm gonna type in a value. And let's just, let's put in like two. And if I hit return, okay? If I hit return, the next time I step, that value is in there, okay? So look at what I just did. I manually went into R5 and I put a new value in it. And when I did that, I had to hit step for it to take place. So it doesn't look like it takes place uh, right away because you have to actually run it. You have to step it to get it to take place. But it did take place before I did the test. And you know that that's true because look at the end flag. It tested two and said, that's not negative. That is not a negative number. And so the end flag was not asserted. So now that allows me to go ahead and do this. Look at jump of negative didn't take, and now it's gonna hop over to it is positive, and then it executes those instructions, and now it comes back to here. So now I can move into R5, and I now it put negative one in there. Let's do a different one. Let's do, uh, let's do zero X, zero, zero, uh, eight. No, let's do seven F, okay? Now it didn't take, it didn't look like it took place, but watch what happens. When I step, 127 went in there, okay? And that is a valid positive number in two's complement uh, coding. So I tested it, it didn't jump because it was positive and there it is. <laughs> okay, so we test, so in this, uh, in this video, we did a couple of, a couple of cool things. First of all, we looked at the jump of negative instruction, but we also looked at how you can actually manually insert a value into uh, a register within the CPU using the debugger. Okay, that's it. As always, subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date on all the latest videos and see ya.